Tax Foundation has put together a, a tax policy tracker on where each presidential candidate stands uh, on taxes. The tracker lets you compare tax plans uh, by candidate, tax type, and topic. Uh, joining us now is Tax Foundation senior economist Erica York. I, I, I like the I like the exercise uh, of of doing it, Erica. Did you do it when there were like ten Republicans? I mean, that was sort of a was there any reason, really? <laughs> Do we care where any of these other candidates are on taxes when we kind of know who at least that's it's narrowed down to like three or four at this point total, including uh, President Biden? Yeah, we've tracked it before. We tracked proposals in 2020 as well. Um, this year, I think a big difference is that there's a, a sadder picture emerging. And that is that most candidates don't have tax plans. Those who have released some information on taxes really lack any details. And then some of the proposals that are being floated would, would take tax policy in the wrong direction and, and harm taxpayers in the economy. So we have a range of proposals from that are, that are just in the talking point stage, like uh, Haley's proposal to cut middle class taxes. There, there are no specifics there. We have proposals that are what I would say detached from um, economic reality and, and not realizing the fiscal constraints that the government faces now, like DeSantis's idea he's recently floated of a single rate flat tax that would somehow cut taxes for all taxpayers. And then at the, the other end of the spectrum, you have proposals that President Biden has outlined in his um, fiscal year budget that would raise the corporate income tax rate, raise taxes on capital gains. And there's the idea that, that Trump has floated to impose a universal baseline tariff of, of 10 percent on all imports. And so we really have a range from from talking points to more harmful policies. And it, it's not it's not a good direction um, for tax policy on the campaign trail. It's, uh, are you strictly nonpartisan? Because I just just listening to, to how you characterize things, you, I, I know I can go walk right out on the street and say, all right, here's a proposal. Is that good? For, <laughs> is that good for taxpayers or bad for taxpayers? And I'm going to get one person that says, "Oh yeah, it's really good for taxpayers because uh, you know, let's soak the rich, and I want more benefit. I want you know, I want uh, more safety net for for people that uh, that that aren't in a position, the same position. I'm. And then you've got other people that think any tax increases uh, would be bad." Uh, you know, writ large for people because it would possibly hurt the economy. I mean, how, how do you do it? Are you nonpartisan? Yeah, so we, we weigh the revenue, economic, and distributional trade-offs. Ideally, we would have enough details from candidates to actually be able to model their tax plan. And so we could estimate what effect would this have on gross domestic product, on wages and jobs? Who would bear the distributional burden of that change? Would it be lower income taxpayers or higher income taxpayers? And what would it do to federal government revenues? Would it improve fiscal sustainability or, or would it worsen it? At this point in the, in the campaign cycle, we don't have enough detail to model any of the candidate tax plans, um, but we can see what direction they would go. Are they pro-growth? Are they economically harmful? Um, guess, do they add to I guess my question, problem? tell me the perfect tax plan according to the tax, pol uh, uh, the tax foundation, Erica. What, what should we do? What would you do? Yeah, we, we've actually put forward a proposal that outlines some um, principles to follow when it comes to tax policy. We've taken a look at what's worked internationally and has been sustainable and pro-growth. You can find it on our website. We, we call it our, our growth and opportunity um, reform plan. And it, it would fundamentally change um, income taxes for businesses, move to a distributed profits tax like that used in Estonia. It would greatly simplify the, the income tax for um, individual taxpayers. Um, the, the system that we modeled it off of in Estonia, it takes the average taxpayer about three minutes to file their taxes, which as we're gearing up for tax filing season here would sound amazing. We all know it's going to take us longer than three right, minutes okay. to go through that process. Um, it raises sufficient revenue and it's pro-growth. Um, so I think there are a number of changes you can make There's from fundamental to tax reform to okay. incremental changes that would improve oh. the tax system. Okay. I guess abolishing the income tax, is, uh, that's, that's never going to happen for me. I guess that's, that's not one of the good ones. Okay. I know. I, I, I know that's a, a pipe.